when I talk about viruses, you would probably think about the coronavirus that is currently wrecking our lives like an alien invasion. And yes, you are right. The coronavirus is a virus, but it's not the only one. There are around 100,939,140 kinds of viruses on Earth, not counting the viruses that infect bacteria, fungi, other protists, and viruses themselves. Talking about bacteria, fungi, and protozoa, they all belong to a big family called pathogens. But what is a pathogen? And what is a virus? Well, today in this What's Up Virology 101 video, I will answer all of your questions about these vicious viruses. First of all, let's find out what a pathogen really is, and I'm going to give you some definitions. So, a pathogen is a bacterium, virus, or other microorganism that can cause a disease. And I want to make it clear that bacteria and virus are both um, microorganisms. And most are prokaryotes, which are single cellular organism, which means they only have one cell. They're only made up of one cell, like the bacteria, while others are eukaryote or multicellular organisms, including us human beings. We are made of billions of cells. And the four main pathogens are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. Let me briefly talk about each main pathogen. So, a bacteria is a microscopic organism that is not visible with the naked eye. Some can be good for you, like the lactobacillus, while others can be bad for you, like E. coli, which can give you stomach cramps. And they can make you sick. Bacteria are considered alive and they can survive by themselves. A protist is a group of unicellular eukaryote organisms. That means they have more than one cell. And they are not plant, animal, or fungi. And so, scientists put them in another group. Just like when you are organizing the things and you don't know where something goes, you just stuff it in a big pile. And we call this the protist pile or the protozoa pile. There are no features in evolutionary history that is coming between these organisms, so they are unofficially placed in this group to make things look neater, like this bunch of things. And fungi. Fungi is a kingdom of multicellular organisms that are heterotrophs, which means they eat other animals for nutrients. They have a really important role in nutrient cycling in an ecosystem. And finally, our main character, the vicious viruses. Viruses are microorganisms that are way smaller than a bacteria and around three times as thin as the width of your one and around three times as thin as the width of one of your hair. They cannot grow or reproduce without a host cell, so they invade living cells and use the living cells replicating machines, or we call them the nucleus, and clone themselves to take over other cells. Slowly they take over all of your cells and then you die. So now you see what I mean by vicious viruses. Now, let me briefly explain the anatomy of a virus. First, there is an envelope protein, or there are more than one envelope proteins, which are these balls sticking out from the surface of the virus. And they bind to host cell membranes to allow the virus to creep into the cell. And in coronavirus, we call these spike proteins. But this is a weird virus that is neither coronavirus or any other viruses. There are a lot of other viruses, including the bacteriophage, which infects bacteria, and the Ebola, which you might have heard of. Um, it's a very big outbreak back in 2014 in Africa. And finally, the dengue virus, which is the virus of the dengue fever uh, that is spread by mosquitoes. Then there is the envelope, which is this circular layer. And it is made out of the same material as the cell membrane, so it helps viruses avoid detection by the host cell's immune system. Thirdly, there is a capsid. It's a protein shell of the virus. It's this one in this hexagon shape, although it's not a hexagon shape in normal life. So um, it's a protein shell of the virus, and it contains the viral genome, and some enzymes. So the enzymes, they help, they, okay, so I drew them as circles, but they come in many shapes. And it helps speed up reactions inside the virus so that it can replicate quicker. 
And finally, there is the viral genome. It is the DNA or RNA of the virus, so it's just this line. And it contains viral genes to be decoded and used for replication in the host cell. Now that we have talked about the anatomy of virus, let's move into the final part and the most interesting part. It's a debate of whether a virus is living or not. So, let me give you some viewpoints on both sides of this debate. And then I will review the great answer to this epic debate at the end. So firstly, this mad scientist says, viruses should not be considered living. He says that viruses cannot self-replicate. Instead, they have to use a host animal to re replicate, unlike living organisms. So that makes them unliving. He also says that viruses don't grow up like you probably do. Viruses are created or born in the adult stage, and they die in the same state. Viruses also do not eat or produce waste. That means they do not go to the toilet like you, and they do not consume food. So don't assume that viruses go and eat you. And finally, scientists think that viruses don't respond to stimuli. In this characteristic of living things, which is called Mrs. Gren, to help you remember, viruses can move. Viruses cannot have respiration, which doesn't technically mean breathing, although it includes breathing. Viruses do not respond to stimuli. And here is the most important one, reproduction. Scientists keep arguing if viruses can reproduce. Excretion. Viruses do not go to the toilet. And viruses do not take in nutrients. So that makes five of the seven characteristics of life not applicable to viruses. But what does this scientist have to say? He says that viruses should be considered as living things because they have their own genetic material like normal organisms. And there's also a new type of giant virus recently discovered called the Mimi virus, which is a very creative name, but the name isn't important. Let's focus on this virus. So here's the fact profile for it. The Mimi virus is around 0 0.7 micrometers across, a little smaller than the width of your hair, but it's humongous in virus standards. As I said, viruses, normal viruses are three times smaller than the width of your hair. So that makes the Mimi virus three times larger than a normal virus. So imagine a giant three times larger than you. That is quite big. These gargantuan Mimi virus are really special in which they have their own tools to replicate, meaning they do not need to rely on a host cell's machinery to reproduce. But there's no need to be scared of this virus because it only infects amoebas, a kind of protist. So after listening to these monstrous microorganisms, you have no need to be scared. If you take care of your personal hygiene and constantly wash your hands, you will be pathogen free. Oh yes, and the answer to this scientific debate of centuries? The truth about whether viruses are alive or not, give me some drum roll. Still remains a hot topic, and there's no definite answer. If this answer doesn't satisfy you, then remember to follow up on our videos as we will be providing more information related to viruses and pathogens. Zachary from What's Up, signing off.